This episode is about the Black Pea Stones, BPS, and the Rolling 20 Bloods versus 18th Street, the Rolling 30 Crips, and the Rolling 40 Crips. BPS and Rolling 20s have been allies for many decades, but being allies, they have some of the same rivals. Some include the West Boulevard Crips, Schoolyard Crips, Rolling 60s, Rolling 30s, and Rolling 40s, and Hispanic Gang, 18th Street. And the beef with the last three rivals are who will be discussed. The Black Peace Stones have two different subsets, the Biddy and the Jungles. BPS started in the late 60s when T. Rogers brought the BPS identity from Chicago. They were established by 1969, and they joined the Blood Alliance in the 1970s. Jungles operate out the Baldwin Village Complex in the Crenshaw District, behind the Crenshaw Mall, which you may know from seeing in Denzel's movie Training West Adams Mid-City District, and have different cliques in their set. Their allies, the Rolling 20 Bloods, located in the West Adams District, was founded in the 70s, becoming one of the largest blood gangs in Los Angeles. The Rolling 20 Bloods have nearby allies like the Fruit Town Brims and the Biddy Stones, but they're in close proximity to their arch nemesis, the Rolling 30s. They're also known for their schoolyard crypts, another rival hood. Now let's talk about their rivals, the Rolling 30 Crips. The Rolling 30s are one of the largest crip gangs in Los Angeles, consisting of many cliques. I see many people say they are a part of the neighborhood car, but they are not. They're only in the Rolling O Alliance and are just allies of the neighborhood crips. The Rolling 30s have many rivals. They beef with a lot of nearby bloods like BPS, Rolling 20s, and all of the Brim sets, especially the Fruit Town Brims. They also beef with all the Hoover sets and gangs in the Gangster Car. The last Crip set I'm gonna mention is the Rolling 40s. They're under the Rolling Over Lions in a neighborhood car. They consist of different clips within the 40s. Some of the gangs that 40s beef with are the 5 1 Trouble Gangster Crips, BPS, Rolling 20 Bloods, and all of the Brim sets. Also, all of the Hoover sets as well, especially the Five Deuce Hoovers. They used to beef heavy with the Four Trey Hoovers, but now they have their turf, which is the dark side click of the Rolling 40s. Despite being in the Rolling O Alliance, they have had past beats with the Rolling 30s, after a Rolling 40 member was held responsible for killing the Rolling 30. They have also had past beats with the Rolling 60 Crips. The last game that will be discussed will be the 18th Street set of the Serenos. In the 1970s and 1980s, it was an influx of Mexican immigrants that came to California. More than half of them made their way to Southern California. In the 1970s, the Latino population was 17% in LA. Now the LA population is around 40% of Latino. With the increase of Latinos in LA, the population of African Americans had a major decrease. In the 1970s, the black community was at 18% in Los Angeles, and current times is at 8%. Many black families left LA County at a rapid pace. In the 1980s, around 100,000 black families left LA to the cities like Riverside, San Bernardino, San Diego, and many cities in Northern California like Sacramento, San Jose, and Oakland. The growing population of Latinos, many moved into areas controlled by African Americans. In some areas, there wasn't any problems with Latinos and African Americans, with many being cordial and still are to this day. But many other areas by the 1990 had tension or already full-fledged beef. 18th Street has many different cliques and are located in many different areas. They were once a part of Clonton 14, but many fallouts caused them to become their own set. And breaking away probably was the best thing they could have did. They became bigger than anyone could have imagined with sets all over America now, even Central America. But the 18th Street set I'm going to talk about in this segment is Westside 18th Street. 18th Street was one of the early Latino gangs to be for African Americans. It is said to believe that they tried to set up shop in the BPS territory in the 1990s, which caused a major beef which has been going on for over 20 years strong. The same with their beef with the Rolling 20 Bloods. A 18th Street member supposedly killed the Rolling 20 Blood, and bloodshed between the gangs has been going on for decades. They also have fallouts with Crip gangs like the Gear Gang, which they operate on the same street, Smiley Drive, which has caused many shootings between them. Now I'm going to go into the rap scene and a few disses between rappers from BPS, Rolling 30 Crip, and Rolling 40 Crips. First, I'm going to get into an up-and-coming rap group, Baby Stone Gorillas. They're affiliated with BPS. Really 
military chopper with the scope. Go boom, boom, boom. Have a nigga run in front of stick like Doug, Doug, Goose. Niggas talking brazy out their mouth like I just won't shoot. Mocha on the roof, taste the work, damn near broke his tooth. You ain't never slid through the crabs trying to pop your tool. Baby stones on they back block finna pop your goons. Niggas playing cards like the tough, that is not your move. See me up in traffic with the strap, better make your move. Pop it shit down from Longwood, way to 60th Street. I mean, hey, hey, if we hit they block and spin again, we gon' case something. I mix the cookies with the blend, it's fucking up my stomach Tryna put a crab on the news, but he keep on running Yeah, I'm CK, last trip to the Ops We ain't gon' say his name, the real yellow tape of funky nigga acts mad man And this song, they just mini crib sets Especially the schoolyards, rolling 60 cribs And rolling 40 cribs The next song I'm gonna get into is Really From The Village Remix A song from about three years ago that featured many artists from BPS the verse that stands out the most is a female rapper from BPS as she throws shots at 18th Street. You can catch a single. I'm from the nickel. Serving and dodging, playing pickle. Fuck around and yeah, have a yak attack on your back and break your neck. It's 2015, it's no respect. Not going into the rolling 30s. Rapper King 2 has been dissing rivals for years in his music. I'm going to show you three songs that have contained disses or references to his op. Rolling 30 rapper this Fruit Town Brands, another blood rival, and Black P Stones. King 2 song Troublesome. He didn't actually diss with words, but stepping on Twinkies is a shout out to rival Rolling 20 Bloods. The last song I'm gonna mention is called All Gas. He once again disrespected the 20 Bloods. Going into rolling 40 rapper, Holly Rock. Holly Rock takes shots at BPS on his song, 40 Bars. The Rolling 40 rapper mentioned sliding down on August. That's a notorious BPS block. Now the next rappers I'm gonna get into is a combination of rappers from the Rolling 40s. They collaborated on a song called Gang Shit. I don't care if I lost, still let them bitch niggas have it. I'm a squab and Lewin Johns, fuck it, call me Maggie Beating Snoopers, girlies up, maggots and faggots Fuck traps too, rolling forties Bitch, you better act like you know me, I'm hood Hey, BZQ, I'm hood, look Gang shit, let me show you how to bang, bitch Pull up on August with a 30, leave a stain tip How they talking about beef, but they tapping out my shooter here Max, you out the homies, they pack you out So when they take shots at the Hoovers, BPS, Crenshaw Mafia, another blood set a Trey Gangsta Crips and the Gangsta Crip card. My first case will be about Giovanni Crowder, a member of the Rolling 20 Bloods. Crowder lived in BPS territory. He was sitting outside his apartment with his girlfriend when James Williams drove up and parked. Soon his acquaintance, Dina Williams, came out to talk to James. Crowder told his girlfriend to go talk to Williams as well. He went back into his apartment and she approached the car. William began flirting with her and offering her a ride. She told him that Crowder was her boyfriend. Crowder returned and stood by his girlfriend. Dina explained to Crowder that Williams was there just to see her. Crowder leaned into the car and asked Williams where was he from. Williams hesitated and looked frightened before he admitted he was from Rolling 40 Crip. Crowder responded off from 20 Bloods and pulled out a gun and shot numerous times at Williams before running away. Crowder's girlfriend later found the gun in an alley and tossed it into a bush. Williams would die at the scene. Crowder's girlfriend was detained that same night and was booked for accessory to murder. But for exchange of her testimony with her only being a minor, she only received 15 months in juvenile hall. But Giovanni Crowder would be charged with first degree murder and receive 50 years to life. Ricky Hamilton, a member of BPS, will be discussed next. Ricky Hamilton was dating Rondalyn Johnson in 2011. Flores, the victim in this case, was a Rolling 30 member. He was a friend of Johnson. Flores lived in BPS territory in February of 2011. Hamilton and another man would come to Flores during acts and once he from 30s. Later on, a security guard would come to intervene, and both Hamilton and the man left. A few days later after that incident, Flores seen Hamilton on the street and challenged him to a fight. Hamilton would run away and run from the fight. Flores would tell Hamilton's girlfriend, Rondalyn Johnson, what happened. 
A few weeks later, Flores and Rondo would spend the night together. Rondo would later open Flores' sliding door when Flores wasn't looking, and Hamilton and two other masked men entered the apartment. Hamilton held a gun, and the man beat Flores and pistol whipped him. Flores ran, and Hamilton fired five shots, hitting him in the hip. Hamilton would take Flores' phone and laptop. Flores would later tell the police about the incident before and an incident with Rondo in that night. Rondolin text messages would show that she helped plan a robbery with Hamilton. Flores agreed to testify and identify Hamilton at trial. Ricky Hamilton was charged with attempted murder, robbery, discharging a firearm, causing great bodily injury, and he received 40 years to life. Rondolin Johnson, who was a minor at the time, only received six months on ankle monitor. Next case is about Peter Cole, another member of BPS. On January 9, 2017, Peter Cole and two other BPS members were riding around in a Toyota, Cole being the back passenger that night. Around 10.25, they drove by the victim, a member of the Rolling 40 Crips named DH, who was sitting outside a liquor store in Western and Vernon, along with another 40 member. They threw up signs at the BPS members. The Toyota stopped in the middle of Vernon, and Cole hopped out with a gun and walked toward DH. When DH seen him approach, he ran. DH would be shot in the right side of his head and above his right hip. Police were sitting in a parked unmarked car on the side of the street when they heard five shots. They reached Vernon and seen a Toyota was the only car on the street and went into pursuit. When the pursuit ended, they reached BPS territory. The officers saw Cole jump out and chase him till he was apprehended. Cole would admit to shooting DH and said he had an altercation with him once in jail. He admitted to being high that night off coke and wasn't thinking straight. When the other BPS members drove through the 40 territory, he also admitted that he seen the unmarked car and he thought the police were gone by the time of the shooting. Peter Cole was found guilty of attempted murder and discharging a handgun with a great bodily injury. He received 25 years to life. The last case between these four games was about four members of the Rolling 30 Crips. In 2010, Charles Allen and three other 30 members went to a Crip party. Around 3 a.m., a BPS member came to the party and shot a 30 member. Plotting revenge, Charles Allen and three other 30 members got into an SUV and drove through BPS territory looking for people to shoot. Around 4.30 a.m., they seen the victims, Jackson and Owens, walking. Jackson was wearing a red Cardinals hat, which is known to be worn by BPS members. The SUV pulled up and asked them where they was from before disappearing in the alley. Jackson and Owens continued walking. As they walked, three 30 members popped out of nowhere asking them where they were from. Jackson said he didn't bang and the three 30 members turned around to talk amongst themselves. Owens testified on the stand that before they turned around, one of the 30 members said, okay, let's do it. Then they began firing. Jackson would be shot in the head, which he would die from. Owens ran and the three 30 members shot at him, but he only would be skinned in the head and he would survive. Allen, the driver, will be placed at the scene because he was on ankle monitor. Allen will be later arrested. He called a member from the 30s after the shooting while locked up and ordered a hit on another 30 member who helped commit the crime. Allen would be later called the ringleader in his crime and the one calling all the shots, even from his jail cell. Allen would be charged with premeditated murder of Jackson and attempted premeditated murder of Owens and was sentenced to 40 years to life. Now I'm gonna get into three cases involving BPS, Rolling 20 Bloods, and a rivalry with the 18th Street Gang. All of these cases were high profile because all of the victims were not gang members. There were senseless crimes that shocked the communities. Larry Lattimore and Jonathan Banks, members of BPS, will be detailed first. September 24th, 2006, Caesar of Wayla arrived at his home around 2.45 p.m. with his two daughters, a five-year-old and a three-year-old. Both of his daughters were in the back seat. As Caesar stepped out of his car, a silver car stopped right beside him. The front right passenger ran the road down and yelled, fuck 18 and Black Peace don't yell right after. The passenger put out a gun and fired a shot at Caesar. The bullet hit Caesar in the chest. Caesar began to run as the shooter exited the vehicle and fired more shots, hitting Caesar in the hand. Caesar collapsed in the courtyard of the apartments. At trial, Caesar identified Banks as the shooter and Larry Moore as the driver. A witness at the scene seen Banks run back to Caesar's car and open the right door in the back seat and fire a third shot, and seen the passenger jump back in the silver vehicle and his driver sped off. The witness called 911 and seen a small child lying on the ground beside Caesar's car. Caesar's three-year-old daughter would die to a single gunshot to the chest. R.I.P. to her. September 29, 2006, 
A member of the Black Peace Stones will be arrested on a Grand Theft Auto charge. He is reluctant at first to speak, but end up telling the officers to shoot his names and that Banks called him and said that he shot at 18th Street and his child, but the shooting of the child was a mistake. On the stand, the BPS informant retracted his statement, saying he just said they were involved to get out of jail, and he denied any knowledge of knowing anything. Even with the retraction from the BPS informant, with many witnesses and Cedar testifying on a high-profile case, Jonathan Banks received 75 years to life, plus a consecutive life term, plus 25 years to life for attempted murder on Caesar. But Ron Larry Moore, the driver, was convicted of second-degree murder of the child, an attempted premeditated murder on Caesar, and he received 72 years to life, plus 40 years to life. May 8, 2009, Rosa Gallegos was fatally shot when she was sitting in a parked car while talking to her boyfriend, Luis, and neighbor, Kenneth Thomas. After Luis was entering the car on the passenger side, a black Malibu stopped in the street. Kenneth and Luis testified they seen a car with three men and the man in the back seat shooting. Luis would duck but would be shot in the arm. Thomas fell to the ground and would have no injuries. When the shooting stopped, Rosa was shot in the chest and the side. They were in 18th Street territory. Police believe that was a possible motive, since BPS and 18th Street are mortal enemies. They began to search the BPS area. Police will spot the black Malibu and follow it to the gas station, where the occupants will be detained. Joel Trizzles will have two phones took, and his fingerprints and Eric Allen's both will be matched on the Malibu. Children's home will be searched, and bullets will be found in his home, the same bullets that will match the ones at the shooting. About a week later, police searched Allen's home where they found many references to BPS, like hoodies, hats, and letters. After examination of his cell phone, it would be discovered that Childress and Allen would have several contacts, and the last convo would be an hour before the shooting. Lewis would be brought to pick out of a lineup. He identified Allen as the back passenger and the shooter, and identified Childress as the driver of the Malibu, and he testified in court. During the trial, Allen refused to come to court and refused to testify. Childress would be called to testify, and he pleaded the fifth. The judge ordered Childress to answer his questions. His response was, you already ordered me to 122 years to life, and he was held contempt of court. Joel Childress and Eric Allen will both be convicted of first-degree murder, two counts of premeditated murder, and they both received life sentences. Last case will be about Pedro Espinosa from 18th Street. This was a high-profile case in 2008 with the murder of Jamel Shaw, a star high school running back expected to receive plenty of college offers. In the evening of March 2, 2008, 17-year-old Jamel Shaw was walking from the bus stop, three blocks away from his home. He was on the phone with his dad before the altercation started. About 8.40 p.m., two Hispanic men jumped out of a white car and asked Shaw what gang was he in. When he didn't respond fast enough, they shot him. They assumed he was a Rolling 20 Blood, a rival gang, because Shaw had on ran at the time. Shaw's father arrived on the scene and stayed with his son until an ambulance came. Shaw would be pronounced dead by 9.55 p.m. Shaw was shot in the stomach, causing him to fall to the ground. While on the ground, he put his hands over his head. He was shot through his hands and the bullet would travel to his face. Rachel would be later found at a park. Police was not aware of the shooting and told him to leave because the park was closed. The police took the license plate number down and Pedro would be later arrested. This case would cause more racial tension because Pedro was in the U.S. illegally. He was previously arrested in November of 2007 for a gun charge and an assault on an officer. And instead of being deported, he was released four months 